Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter to everybody. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freak early, man. You know it. It's 3.15 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. If it's before 3.30, man, you know I found a story that I feel very strongly about, and I certainly did. It was one of the first stories I came across this morning. It's about Donald Trump at the UFC fight, and the loser, the loser of the fight, Jorge or George something or other, uh, made a big deal out of saying, our pre that's our president, and the crowd shared. It's on Twitter, and there's a lot of responses on Twitter, including my own, and I'll have the link to Twitter down below so you could add your response. Uh, you know, and I'm going to do this video a little different. I'm not going to, you know, usually I'll be kind of snide and make fun, and make fun of the, the people, I, the guys that I think that have small man parts or uh, make fun of Donald Trump. I'm just going to talk about my observations here. The stuff I observed from this video of Donald Trump on Twitter. And then I'm going to tell you guys about an altercation I had. I just, I swear to God, I just remembered this all. It's, it's a weird series of, of circumstances that just reminded me of something that happened to me. Uh, for those of you that do watch the UFC, you'll probably appreciate this story. It's probably something you guys would like. Uh, okay, let me start at the beginning here. My, my observations. So on Twitter, at first, I thought the whole crowd was cheering for Donald Trump. And if you really look closely at it, what I looked at is the people in the crowd. Instead of listening, you know, it, it sounds like a lot of people cheering. You know, I'm like, wow, there's, there's still, you know, this guy just got arrested, just got arraigned. And you're telling me these people, all this, 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 this arena full of people still support him? You know, because up here in New York, in the New England area, I, I have not seen a Trump, I swear on the Holy Bible, I swear to God, I have not seen one Donald Trump sticker, except for one. I'd say in months. There's one old beat-up truck at the supermarket I go to that has a uh, Trump sticker from 2016. He's not, he is not popular up here. Okay, so I looked at the crowd in this video, right? And you look, look at the people. Don't listen to the crowd. Don't, don't use your ears. Use your eyes. And look at the people standing or the people clapping. It's a lot different. It's a lot different if you look at it that way. There's not a whole lot of people cheering at all. Uh, there's a one little bunch of people to the right of the camera. I'd say maybe five guys standing up. Uh, the majority of people are not clapping or cheering. Okay. Uh, I notice it's the loser, the guy who lost the fight, that, that's making all this noise. Okay, now here's the thing I noticed too. Uh, Kid Rock, he just made this big video. You know, with the, the Bud, Bud Light cans. When, when he made that video, what I, saw, what I saw in Kid Rock's video is I saw a lot of anger. This is, you know, people, people have uh, commented, and, you know, Kid Rock doesn't hate anybody. What I saw most of all was just hatred on Kid Rock. You know, anger and hatred, which is really fear in Kid Rock's face. And as he turns and, and as he opens up on those cans, honestly, honestly, the first thing I think in my head is, you know, it's not those cans that he's really angry at. It's Dylan Mulvaney. And that's, that scares the hell out of me. That scares the, the bejesus out of me. It really does, that how intolerant people are. Uh, somebody you don't even know, doing business with a company you have nothing to do with, and you get this angry about it. It just, it, it, it's, it's, it, I can't wrap my mind around it. Okay, so then I see... You know, Kid Rock sitting right next to Donald Trump. Donald Trump just got arraigned for what he did, or if you're a Trump supporter, what he didn't do, or the witch hunt, or whatever, however you want to call, whatever you want to call it. And he chooses to have Kid Rock sit right next to him. You know, I, I don't believe being the former president of the United States that he didn't have some say that Kid Rock would be sitting right smack next to him. You know, and I think about the the display that Kid Rock put on. You know, and it, you know, I, you guys know I own guns. I've shot guns. It, that didn't, didn't bother me. Uh, boycotting Bud didn't bother me. But his anger and what I think when he opened up on those cans, I, I, I didn't just see the cans. I saw trans people and the LGBTQ community is, is the, as the focus of his anger. And that scares the hell out of me. And the possibility this guy could actually become the president. 
You know, and they keep talking about revenge and vengeance and the revenge tour and all this other stuff. And I, you know, I can't imagine if I if I actually was part of the LGBTQ community, I, I would be terrified of what might be coming if Trump won the election. And uh, I like to stand up. I like to stand by people like that. Okay, now here's the weird thing. I've talked about the UFC before and why I can't watch it. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly why. Just yesterday, I got a face uh, on, on uh, Facebook. I got a request, a friend request. And I hadn't, I hadn't heard of this person. I hadn't thought of this person in decades. I don't think I've thought about him in decades. And just yesterday, I got a friend request from him. As I'm watching the UFC thing with Donald Trump, and I, I, I watched a couple of the UFC fights a little bit. And I, I told you guys, I can't watch this. And I, I looked at the people in the crowd, and I looked at the comments, and I, I just don't get why people like Donald Trump. You know, and if some of you watch UFC, that's great. But I'm going to tell you why I can't watch it. It reminded me of something that happened. I used to have parties at my house back when I was using. And I also would go down to York City. I'd come back with uh, materials. And I'd have a big party in my house. And I was the, the king. I was the head guy, the boss. And uh, I had totally forgotten about this night. And this is one of many times, many times this, this kind of thing happened. But I had totally forgotten about this. And this involves the same guy that sent me the, the Facebook friend request. He was in my basement, and this was back in the probably early 90s. And he was in my basement, and there was probably about 50 people in my house, a keg of beer, other materials. People are having fun down in the basement and upstairs, out in the yard, and I am in control of the whole thing. I'm the boss. And I go downstairs, and I, I keep hearing him mouth off to, to women, and just talking smack and just being a general jerk. And then I saw him push a girl. And I told him, I went up to him and I said, you know, you got to leave. You got to get out of here right now. And he looked at me and he goes, and he laughed. He thought, I don't know if he thought it was kidding or whatever, but he goes, F you. And he just turns back and they were playing cards at a table downstairs in my basement. And this is where uh, a lot of times when this would happen, I would get quiet. And I walked away. And the rage kind of built in me. And I got to the stairs. I didn't go up the stairs. I turned around. I went back to him. And he didn't even see me coming. And I bent down and put my head by his arm, under his arm. I bent over. And I wrapped my arms around him. And I picked him up. And I threw him over my shoulder. This guy probably was about... I, at this time, I was a good 240, 250 pounds. Six foot four. Um, I remember him grabbing, you know, panicking and grabbing on because now he knows he pushed it too far. And I remember there was a support column, a lolly column, cement filled iron lolly column in my basement. And I remember he grabbed onto it. You know, he's, he's hanging over my shoulder. I'm walking with him to the stairs and he grabs onto it, you know, trying to, to stall his fate. And I hear all my buddies say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Daryl. And they peel my friend, my, my friends, or what I thought were my friends back then, peel his fingers off, you know, so he can't hold on to it anymore. And I just wait. And I, I, I don't really, I, I did, at this point, I have no expression. I'm not angry. I don't look angry. I don't look sad. I don't look anything. This is, this is how, this, this happened often, like every week. And I carried him right up the stairs. I remember hearing his head hit the stairs above, the ceiling above, because there was another set of stairs above the stairs I was going up. And I could hear his head go boom, 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 you know, as I carried him up the stairs. I go out into my driveway and I have a paved, you know, paved driveway. And it's not a new paved driveway. It was, one, it was an older driveway that had like ruts where the tires were and then a hump in the middle. And he's over my shoulder. And I'm picturing what I'm going to do right there. And right then, right then, I hear all my friends watching. They all run out. And they're cheering me on. Slam them, Daryl. Slam them. Body slam. You know, and I, I hadn't thought of doing this. I, was, I just wanted him out of my house because he was being disrespectful. And I took this guy and I just leaned back. And I kind of just used his body like a, a, a bag of wheat and whipped it from back here. And I whipped it over my shoulder. And he went flying, and he landed right in the middle where the driveway, the hump is in the middle, the, the paved hump. And his body actually bounced. I saw his body bounce. This wasn't a ring. 
like a boxing ring or a wrestling ring. This was a paved driveway. And I saw his body bounce on that driveway. And I just turned around and walked back in. Uh, I later found out he broke, I broke his collar, well, I broke his collarbone and he had needed stitches in the back of his head, uh, several stitches. Um, I hadn't heard from him for years. And this is the thing why I can't watch UFC. Uh, I've told you guys before, you know, when I lose, uh, and I, I wouldn't even call this a fight. This is, this isn't something I'm proud of. This happened over and over again. And these people pop up throughout my life 10, 20, 30 years later. Like yesterday or the day before when I saw this guy's friend week, he sends me a friend request on Facebook and a part of me feels sorry for him and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, and part of me, I feel like I have to watch over my shoulder because what I did to that guy, you know, I'm always gonna have to look over my shoulder for him, his brothers, uh, people in his family for what I did to him. And there's literally dozens of people I've done, you know, that this has happened to. And then there's times I've lost fights and that doesn't feel good either. You know, and I wonder if I'm going to run into those guys again, if they still hold a grudge, if they, you know, and it, it's a constant state of uh, feeling shame, uh, sympathy, remorse, um, you know, and, and I, I feel even worse when this guy sends me a friend request. Um, you know, I'm like, this guy is cool enough to let bygones be bygones, you know, and, and he actually you know, just wants to be buddies again. And I, part of me still remembers seeing me, you know, and what I did and what I, how I, I didn't have to do what I did. You know, I just listened to the people cheering. And I thought of this as I watched, this is the kind of thing I think of when I watch the Uf, UFC. This is the kind of thing that constantly pops in my head. And it's, it's, it, it's like uh, PTSD with me. I can't watch it. It makes me wonder about the people that do watch it. Or go to it like Donald Trump or Kid Rock, you know. Either or like Mike Tyson. Either they they are psychotic and they have no empathy or sympathy, or they've or they've never actually ever been in a fight. They've just been on the sidelines, and now it's some kind of masculine testosterone thing, where they a pseudo tough thing where they watch this and they talk about it the next day. And yeah, he clipped him, and yeah, that he slammed him, and he, you know. You know, when they've never actually been in the mix before. That's what I see when I look at this. I, you know, I could be wrong. I don't know. But that's why I can't watch the UFC. And that's what I think of Donald Trump. I don't think he ever threw a punch in his life. I think he just goes there to look tough. I think he's all talk. He talks the talk, but he's never walked the walk. That's my opinion. And I fear the day I, I, that, that America ever sees him get any power again. You guys have a good Easter.